Once vertex and fragment shaders became available, all this changed. You can now program whatever functions you wanted. When you select a material and lighting, what the 3JS library does under the hood is create efficient vertex and fragment shader programs for you. However, you can create and modify your own materials by using 3JS's shader material. Vertex and fragment shaders have similar structures. You first define the inputs to the shader. There are two kinds of declaration in 3JS, uniform and varying. In WebGL itself, there are also attributes for a vertex shader, which are the values such as the vertex position, normal, and UV coordinate data. These attributes are built in for 3JS, so do not have to be declared. In fact, they have those exact names, position, normal, UV. Uniform data is whatever is constant for the triangle being shaded. For example, values such as the position of the light sources and the color and shininess of the material are uniforms. A value is labeled as varying if it is computed or set by the vertex shader as an output and passed to the fragment shader as an input. The vertex shader outputs these values and then the rasterizer interpolates these across the triangle surface. In other words, these values can and will vary per fragment. You're in total control of what gets interpolated. The more data per vertex that you want interpolated, the more time and resources it takes. Nothing comes for free. The fragment shader also takes uniform data as inputs. The fragment shader then, as a minimum, outputs a fragment color with the name GL frag color. I say as a minimum because in fact in many graphics APIs, the fragment shader can output to a number of images at one time. This is called MRT for multiple render targets. Targets is another name for output images. Unfortunately, WebGL does not support this yet. To summarize, here's 3JS's view of the world. A vertex shader has inputs that are uniforms and attributes and always outputs a GL position and can output varying values. The fragment shader takes these varying values along with whatever uniforms it wants and outputs a GL frag color.